great to see all the women here. This marks our first meeting of the Water and Power Subcommittee since the COVID-19 outbreak and with our new socially distanced setup. And while it's crucial that we do get back to business, uh, we also need to recognize, like so many other areas of our economy, the pandemic is impacting our water sector. We'll hear about some of those impacts at the full committee hearing tomorrow, where I'm pleased that there'll be a witness who will discuss the challenges that our water managers are facing. But today we're re here to receive testimony on five bills pending before the subcommittee, including S4288, my Water Energy Technology Demonstration and Deployment Act. This legislation is a result of information and recommendations we received from hearings this committee's held this Congress, as well as continued engagement with water stakeholders in Arizona and across the, the West. The Department of Energy is doing a lot of good work on water technologies. At the same time, the Bureau of Reclamation has programs that support deployment of many of these same tools. Whether it's water reuse, recycling, or desalination, better pumps, or some other technology, my bill will help get the advancements and expertise developed by DOE out of the lab and into the hands of water managers where they're needed now. And doing all that is a win all the way around. It will accelerate commercialization of the technology, get a bigger bang for the buck from taxpayer dollars being spent by DOE and reclamation on these solutions, and start producing additional water supplies needed by Western communities. S4288 also establishes a Western Water Resilience Center at one or more universities in the West. As the universities in Arizona have shown, our academic institutions can drive innovation that will not only improve water security, but will also spur greater development of a water technology industry in the U.S., which will create jobs and economic growth. In addition to S4288, we'll receive testimony on a number of bills that have been introduced by our Democrat colleagues, including Senator Udall's S2718, Senator Feinstein's S3811, Senator Harris's S4188, and Senator Wyden's s 4189. Each of the bills today contain provisions that are important to Western water management. But as we craft and review legislation, we must be careful to not intentionally or unintentionally put up additional regulatory roadblocks in front of much needed water storage or other supply projects. I do have some serious concerns with language in some of the bills, but I believe there are many elements we can work together and reach bipartisan agreement. When it comes to water, we need to resist efforts to drag us back into old conflicts or either or games and focus on solutions the committee has shown can be developed by working constructively across lines. In addition to the bills we're reviewing today, there are a number of bipartisan bills already received committee consideration and are awaiting further action. This includes S2044, the bill I introduced with Senator Sinema, to address aging water infrastructure, and S1932 that was introduced by Senator Gardner and co-sponsored by Senator Feinstein, Sinema, Rosen, and myself. Combined together, the consensus provisions from the bills reviewed and reported by this committee can and should form the basis of a water package that we can and should move this year. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses on the five bills before us today and working through the remaining issues to enact meaningful water legislation this year. And now I'll hand it over to Senator Cortez Masso.